last night. He really kind of went wild on that. So th- that's pretty crazy. And listen to this. He's bringing the Cabo Wabo Cantina to New York City. So Sammy Hagar, in his third uh, Van Halen news item, is bringing Cabo Wabo Cantina to New York City. They had a wall burgers that they were going to put up there right in Times Square. For some reason, it fell through, and the Red Rocker decided to pick up the option there, and he's going to be in Times Square in Manhattan. It's his first East Coast location. It's going to be 8,300 square feet. It's going to be located at 725 8th Avenue between 45th and 46th. And he is set to open next year, and he's so confident he signed a 10-year lease, Dave, if you can believe that. And, oh, uh, man. Uh, okay. And okay. <laughs> the good news is, of course, it's going to have all his famous drinks and uh, Mexican food. And he's going to have a stage. They're going to have a stage at the uh, at the facility. So hopefully Sammy will uh, – maybe he'll do a birthday spot next year in New York, and we can go, Dave. Wouldn't well, that, that, would, be that would be about time. I'll be see you there. Time, right? It'd be good. So uh, hopefully we'll be there for the opening of that. I'd love to be part of that. That sounds fantastic. And on his fourth news item, Sammy is dropping the price on his house. So get out your checkbooks and open up your lines of credit because Sammy <laughs> has a house on Lake Arrowhead in California, this French-style chateau. for I don't know if it's 4.2 or 4.7. The two things had conflicting pricing on there, but he dropped the price by over a million dollars. It's eight bedrooms, nine bathrooms, 6,557 square feet overlooking Lake Arrowhead. He bought this home in 2009 for $2.3 million. So, uh, Dave, I think you've got enough shekels saved up. You have your birthday money from when you were five, so I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I am I'm calling my uh, Sammy Hagar real estate agent, Midwest Ron, right now. Oh, who yeah. Will clar- who will clarify the selling price. That's right. And uh, let me know if I can afford it That's or not. right. He's going he's gonna <laughs> to check into your uh, into your credit and all your savings there. And I, I, Dave, Dave has every dime he's ever made. I, don't, he, I, I wish I did. He, wouldn't actually, that be but... funny? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, three children definitely, uh, oh. you know. And that you don't dog get to keep too. It that don't dog's not cheap all. either. That no, dog no. <laughs> that'll drain you. That dog. Sam has yet another news item because he did an interview where he yeah, there was it was Ultimate Classic Rock. I think he was talking about how he has thrown his hands up about a Van Halen reunion. No, he hasn't. Well, he says he <laughs> no has. No way, they knocked on his door tomorrow. He's, yeah, <laughs> he's playing possum is what he's doing. So yes. he, he, well, this is the quote from Sam. He says, I'm not even concerned about what Roth and Ed are doing anymore. Obviously, they're not doing anything, and I hope they're well. Mikey and I are just tired of sitting around waiting. Woo! That's it. That sounds like, uh, you know, screw you. He's, you're he, not going to come pick me up. He's tired of sitting around not getting the phone call that's never going to come. That's, that's right. What he's tired he's of. staring at that bath phone going, come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that doesn't seem to be happening. But what does seem to be happening is he's doing a season four of his rock and roll road trip. And he was recently seen filming an episode with the one and only Cheech and Chung comedy rock and roll duo. And everybody knows that Cheech and Chung and Sammy have a lot that they like to share. And I'm talking about the grass. That's right. (laughs) They all love the weed. So um, I'm sure they'll all get baked and have a wonderful episode to show everybody next year. Now, since the last time we spoke to you guys, they made the announcement that Maroon 5 is going to be the halftime uh, Super Bowl show for this coming year in 2019 in February. And there is even a Facebook page that is a group that is petitioning for Van Halen to be considered for that at some point. Oh, oh what a waste of time. Yeah. They will, it's just, <laughs> every year this comes up, and it's like every year, I don't know, like, I'm uh, speaking of smoking grass, I'm telling you, it's like, I wish, I wish, I wish you a lot of luck. Yeah, well, here's the thing, is that why Van Halen would never be considered is Van Halen's typically, to be honest with you, is not big enough 
to do something like that. They're too male-oriented. They always want a female-oriented act. Look at the people they've had, like uh, Janet Jackson, uh, Justin Timberlake, and Maroon 5. These have draw a lot of females because they already got the males watching the game, so they got to get the females involved, so they're interested in a mid-time at Lady Gaga, or Katy Perry. These are the people who, Madonna, they've done these halftime shows, and it only makes sense, I guess, for them to have a female audience. Now, back in the day, maybe Van Halen would have drawn a female audience. Now, it's just uh, middle-aged white men like uh, you and I, Dave. That's that's who they play to. So, But I, I decided that I thought it would be fun to do a little game as to what Van Halen would play if they were to get a set in there. And this is what I came up with. I thought it would be cool if they opened with Unchained, went right into uh, Panama, then danced the night away, and then closed with Jump. And somewhere in there, uh, there would have to be some sort of a mini Ed solo, probably before Jump and uh, after Dance the Night Away, maybe a little piece of eruption or something. And I asked my uh, partner here to play along, and this was how he responded. No. <laughs> I don't do what ifs. He I don't, doesn't although do I will what say, ifs. I will say I think your song selection is, is pretty spot on. Yeah. Because, you know, they only you have gotta like, go what, with the, what, the broad minutes. strokes. Right, you got to go with the big hits. Yeah. You're going to have to somehow turn it into a medley somehow. Right, right, yeah. And then, actually, if Van Halen did do it, you know there would be guest stars galore, right. you know, to, to maximize the audience and stuff like that. But I think Van Halen's best shot of doing that was right after the Janet Jackson fiasco. Yeah. When they started booking Classic rock, rock bands guys. to play yeah. it yep. safe. Yep. And now, because it's been like, what, 10, 15 years since Yeah, then, yeah. They are moving back yeah, towards in, that, in, yeah. into that space, yep. into younger artists. Yep. So Van Halen's shot has, has come and gone. Right. Until someone whips out a titty and then Van Halen come back. <laughs> that, 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 may, that may be their last saving grace, but I don't even know if that would phase anybody anymore. That's true. At this point, it's like, it's like par for the course. So, yeah. It's like, you know, yeah. but. I mean, every year, like this, oh, are they going to be that? You no, know, they're not going to be the halftime entertainment. No way. <laughs> Come on. No way. I wish, but no way. <laughs> Maybe Vince Neil can come on and flash everybody. <laughs> oh, man. Man. You know, that guy is just enjoying his life. I think that's, he's enjoying not being a Motley Crue anymore. And, you know, God, God bless him. I, I just hope he's... I, I, I just hope, you know, he's, yeah. he's going on a healthy path. That's <laughs> right, the, right, exactly. You know, that's the part I worry about, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. is that... Uh, it's true. You know, you know what you it know? is? You know what makes him look a little odd is the facial surgery that he's had. The weight gain makes his face look odd, I guess, because of the surgery, the restrictive surgery. It's strange. But anyway, so, oh, by the way, I do want to make a prediction. I know this sounds a little out of the blue. I listen to a bunch of podcasts out there, KISS podcasts. Uh, Kiss FAQ, Three Sides of the Coin, Kiss Room, all these different Kiss podcasts. And I I love them all, and they're all great. But I just wanted to say I have a prediction for all those guys. Okay. And you've heard it here first. Now, this is, I don't know if you heard this piece of fact, and I know this is a little bit of a tangent from Van Halen, but Kiss is related to Van Halen in an indirect way. So, but I do want to say this briefly, and I wanted to get your opinion, Dave. So, okay. Listen to this. So Ace really has a new album coming out. It's called okay. Space Man. It's coming out uh, uh, on uh, the 19th of October. It was this Friday. So he had this incredible backing band that I've been seeing Ace for years. I'm a huge Ace Freely fan. I love Ace Freely. It's my favorite part of Kiss. So I've seen Ace for years. This backing band that he has was tremendous. I mean, I... Enjoyed the band as, I, as much as I enjoyed Ace. That's how good they were. So good. Chris Wise on bass. He had Richie Scarlett on rhythm guitar. And he had Scott Coogan on drums. These guys were tight. Vocals, backgrounds, unbelievable. All such great stuff. Out of the blue, he fires his entire band and hires Gene Simmons' backing band for when Gene was touring around with the box set, okay? And this is also why it ties into Van Halen. We talked about the Gene Simmons box set. 
and he hires that band, which is a younger band, but still, I've never seen this before. Someone fires their entire band and takes an entire other band. And he took it from Gene. Not that he stole it from Gene. But I think it's because Gene is going on tour with Kiss for this end of the road show, right? So I'm starting to put things together here. Then I see Gene going on for this end of the road show. He's going to be busy with Kiss. So he figures he convinces Ace into taking his band because I think Kiss is going to go on their end of the road show and have Ace Freely as a special guest. I think it's going to be very much like the Motley Crue show where they had special guest Alice Cooper, which really gave a lot of value to the ticket because you got an hour long Alice Cooper show before the Motley Crue show. So it really gave like a strong value to the ticket. And I'm thinking Gene's a real smart businessman. Imagine if you're a Kiss fan, you go, you get a whole Ace Freely show and a live Kiss show. And I guarantee you, Kiss will shave a few minutes uh, like uh, off their set. So instead of like a two-hour set, maybe they'll do an hour and a half. You know what I mean? And it lightens up their load a little bit, adds value to the ticket, and they put Ace Freely in front of it. And I think that's also why Gene wanted to keep his guys employed. Said, Ace, I tell you what, you take my band, then you go out and we'll, we'll hook you up on this tour. You'll be our special guest. And when I mean special guest, that means you're not just an opening act. You're not a co-bill, but you are, you're coming out, you're playing an hour. I mean, you're coming out and playing an hour and you, and, and you're playing to an audience that's really gonna love you. Like when Alice opened for, uh, Motley Crue, you wonder, what the hell is Alice Cooper doing? He's freaking Alice Cooper. This guy was smart. He got on that tour. He did a whole solid hour, which he knocked it out of the park. Anybody who saw those shows will tell you. Phenomenal show he used to put on. And you got the best of Alice Cooper, backed by the best of Motley Crue, and it made an amazing ticket, and that tour was unbelievably successful. What do you think? Well, and of course, they'll have Ace out for the encore. Well, I was wondering how they're going to do that, considering that Tommy Thayer is in his Ace costume. (laughs) Well, they'll have to get past that. But, I mean, the possibility is there. Right! And right. right, the possibilities there. And actually, I just it's funny you mentioned this because I just read an article today about an interview with Paul Stanley. Yeah. And Paul was like, you know, I'm not against having right. any former members except Vinnie Vincent come on stage <laughs> with us. Right? Yeah. What's that? Have not sure except Vinnie Vincent. He has a thing against Vinnie Vincent. Well, he didn't. No, he did not single no, Vinnie didn't. Vincent he didn't. out. Okay, okay. He did not single right. anybody anybody out. Right. You know, I mean, Gene has worked with all of these on his box set tour. Yeah. So he's reestablished ties with, I think, everybody. Right. I mean, he's at least cordial with That's everybody. That's true. He's a smart dude. Right. So, you know, and Paul didn't deny it either. So I think they're trying to create some buzz. Yeah. For final tour. Absolutely. Part two, as Absolutely. I like to call yeah, it. Exactly. This is, I think this, this is the second final tour right. that they're having. Well, they so, technically say that was the final tour of the original lineup. Oh. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm curious. I, I think they're just trying to drum up interest. But yeah, I did hear Eddie Trunk's rant on the band replacement. Yeah for Ace's band, and he was kind of surprised. And also, I mean, unfortunately, it couldn't have come at a worse time for one of Ace's old band members, because I think his wife just passed away. Yeah, Richie Scarlett's wife Right, right. And I mean, he and he's worked with Richie Scarlett. For years. For years. Yeah, yeah. He was originally in Freely's Comet, and then I don't know what happened, but something fell through there. Richie's a good guy. If you check out Richie's solo albums, he's got some really good solo albums. He's always a nice highlight of an Ace show. He's like the perfect guy to back up Ace. He's almost like a, a Keith Richards for Ace because he has that swagger, great guitar, provides uh, great background vocals, very visual on stage. The reason I also bring this up is I was thinking, Dave, what about a Van Halen tours and has The Circle as a special guest? What do you think about that? Oh, yeah. Well, absolutely. Can you, you imagine? Want to do something like that. But, I mean, this is well, what yeah, promoters people, love. This is what promoters oh, love. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff that people, you know, you yeah. start, you know, you call up Gary Sharon, you say, does Extreme want to open the show? Right, yeah. And, right? And then you come in and you and you tell Sammy, hey, do you want Circle, Chicken Foot? I mean, pick whatever band that begins with the letter C that you're working with this week. 
we'll, we'll throw you on stage for an hour. And then Van Halen comes, headlines. Right. They come out. They bring Sam. They bring Gary. They right. all sing a talk about love, <laughs> which is the ultimate irony. The curtain comes down. The fans go nuts. You and I have heart attacks and we die happy. <laughs> right. Exactly. That would be exactly right. And, and that whole scenario will. 